Hi, I'm Ruby from Beautiful Parallel. If you follow us on Instagram, you might already know that earlier this year I obtained my first ball jointed doll. This is an Airy by Color Theory and she is everything. When her box finally arrived at my door after waiting 15 months since the pre-order, I just dropped to my knees and hugged the parcel. I haven't really talked about BJDs on this channel, but if you're in the doll customizing community, you've probably come across this term. Ball jointed dolls are made up of a series of separate pieces that are strung together with elastic, rather than having plastic hinges like Monster High or Barbie dolls. There's a huge community of artists who painstakingly sculpt their own BJDs, and these are typically more expensive than the kind you can buy from a company. Airy is an artist BJD, sculpted by Layla from Color Theory, and then multiple casts are made by creating a mold of the doll's pieces. You can really feel the artisan craftsmanship and the love that went into Airy's sculpt. I love that there are some raw surfaces like the inside of her face. Also to note, she didn't come with these eyes. I put some in that I received from crafteyes.com so that she looked a bit more alive. In this video, I want to share the process of pulling apart Eri, hot suading her joints, restringing her and giving her a brand new face up. As I move her joints around, you might notice they've got a bit of a kick to them. This is pretty normal if the doll's elastic is strung a little too tightly and the hot suading process will help. Let's pull her apart. I'll be keeping her left and right pieces separate using these two boxes. Airy is strung with an elastic running from one wrist to the other, and a bigger elastic from her head down to both her ankles. With help from Beautiful Parallel's other member Cassie, I began disassembling her arm elastic. By removing her magnetic faceplate, we can access this S-hook. I'm going to use a broken zipper to leverage it out of its position. Poking the skewer through relieves tension from the hook so it can be slipped out and the head removed. It's funny how she suddenly goes super limp. This same elastic is running down both her legs, so starting at her ankle, I take the first leg off. The sculpting on these pieces is just incredible. I had to keep stopping to admire them. <laughs> And there she is, completely unstrung. Keeping the left and right pieces separated, I give Airy a bit of a bath in warm water with washing detergent. Before I seal her, I want to get off the grime from my sweaty hands since I've been handling her for a few weeks already. I pull the pieces out and leave them to air dry. Now I can start the hot suading process. I'm going to use a hot glue gun and some icy pole sticks. The idea of hot suading is to add some texture to the inside of the joints so that the doll can hold a pose better. Taking a small blob of hot glue, I smear it inside all the joints I want to stick better. 
You need to work quickly. It took me a few tries to get the technique right, but I found that working in smaller smears worked better than trying to cover a lot of surface at once. I regularly popped the ball joint in the socket to test the fit. This one looks good. I laid this one on a bit too thick, leaving gaps at the joints. Excess dried hot glue can easily be peeled off and reapplied if this happens. For much smaller joints like the wrist, I use some rolled up paper to apply the glue instead of the icy pole stick. After hot suading all her joints, I hang them up like a coat hanger Christmas tree. One for the left pieces and one for the right. Then I give them a thorough spray with Mr. Super Clear and remove them from their ornamental coat hanger state. Restringing her is just like unstringing in reverse, but I'm following Colour Theory's included guide as well as the plethora of photos I took while unstringing. That noise you can hear in the background is my cat trying to do the voiceover along with me. I will be using assorted ribbons to help me restring the doll and start from the S hook in her head. You can get some nifty restringing tools that grab and guide the elastic through the holes, but I don't have one. And between ribbons and tweezers, I didn't really need it. A second pair of hands really helps though. I decided to try on the second pair of feet that she came with, since I've had the flat feet on since she arrived. They're so cute and squishy looking. With the body together, I began restringing her arms. Already she feels a bit sturdier when I pose her. I can actually put her arms at 45 degree angles, which she wouldn't hold before. Success! Yeah. 
I ordered my doll with both an Airy and Arn faceplate, and first I want to try repainting the Airy. Since everything has been sealed and left to cure for several days, I can dive right in with pastels to give her some cute rosy cheeks. I didn't actually plan out this face up, I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself or I'd never get around to actually doing it. I've seen multiple artists buy an Airy or other BJDs and then resell them without making it their own, and I didn't want that to happen to me. I'll probably wipe and repaint her face a million times to give her new looks, so I just jumped in head first. I pencil in her winged eyeliner, as well as her eyebrows and eyelashes. I know that I'll be going over it all with acrylic paints, so I'm not concerned about building up a lot of colour. Here's how the mapping of her face looks so far. Very pink, but I am here for it. When I switch to acrylics, I focus on all the white areas first, blocking in her little teeths and doing preliminary highlights on her eyeliner and lips. I want to try continuing the gradient on her lips with acrylics to make it pop, but you'll see that this didn't end up working, and I went for a full coverage lipstick instead. To make sure my paints don't dry up, I usually work in one colour at a time, so all the white areas, then all the pink areas, and so on. I deepen the recesses of her lips with a deep plum colour.
played with the lip design a little bit off camera and then I went over the eyebrows with some gradients of pink. I knew that, at least for the moment, I'd mostly be having her in a pink wig, so I matched her eyebrows to that. I painted in her eyelashes, her eyelid creases, and decided to add little blue freckles. I dot these on with very watered down paint and then dab them with my finger. I also added some silver wings above her eyeliner and dotted on some additional white freckles. With some final finishing touches, Eri's face up is done! Time for a seal with Mr. Super Clear. I also added some silver heart nipples because I can't help myself. But here she is. I love her so much. I'm sure I'll get a lot better at painting BJD faces. It's quite a different animal to Monster High since there are no eyes to paint and the sculpt is extremely different. But for my first pass, I'm really stoked. Time to dress her up. I didn't make any of these items, but I'll link the shops I bought them from in the description box in case you are interested. Oops, <laughs> I nearly forgot her eyes. <laughs> I roll some snakes of eye putty that I got from the A-Zone label shop in Japan around the eyes to hold them in place before heaping more on the backs. But I don't know why, the putty wasn't sticking to the resin. I don't think it liked the heat of the weather because it felt a bit funny. So I switched to some good old blue tack instead. Do other countries have blue tack? I'm not sure but it's super cheap to get at supermarkets in Australia and does the exact same thing as the eye putty. With her eyes all squished in, now I can put her wig on. And I just, once she was all together, I just stared and touched her for a bit. I'm so happy. and complete her with a Santa hat. Cassie and I were working on our new BJDs at the same time, so here's her Venus halo from Dollzone as well. Thank you for coming on this unfamiliar journey with me. I learned most of my BJD care knowledge from Andrea at Nicole's Dreams, a fellow Melbourne artist and former BJD expert. 
I really appreciate all of your patience. I haven't made a video in about six months. It's just the way this year has gone. <laughs> But in the new year, I will definitely be trying to create more content because there's a lot of dolls that I want to work on. Thank you so much to all of our patrons. These people have stuck with us during a very tough year and we really appreciate all of the support. If you'd like to become a patron, then please follow the link in the description box below. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays and a Happy New Year to everybody. Please stay safe as we enter 2021. Peace out. <laughs>